Good evening, Russ. It's supposed to be a place where you confess your sins, not commit them. The Diocese of Cleveland says someone assaulted a priest at gunpoint while in a confessional. He ran into this guardrail. You can still see the damage here. The bus went halfway over the guardrail, teetering on the edge of this hillside here. And as you can see, a powerful storm just moved through a tornado warning here just a little bit ago. Take a look at the powerful winds that ripped up this tree from the ground. Shelters have not had to open at this point, but there are three that can open if they are needed uh, and no power outages to tell you about. The medical examiner says the woman who died in this fire is 57 year old Kimberly Johnson. Three strangers, three passers by tried to save her life this afternoon, but they couldn't. The flames were just too powerful. There are two dead after what happened this afternoon. A canine named Aaron and the suspect accused of stabbing him to death. Amazingly, the department only lost a few sets of gear out of 20, but they have to send it all away to be cleaned because of smoke damage. So they're thankful right now for the departments like Kennedy and Coriopolis, who've sent donations for them to use in the meantime. The property was left like this, halfway demolished for several days. We're told this caution tape was put up just Thursday after Channel 11 contacted the mayor's office. We begin right now with our top stories. A suspect accused of shooting a Louisiana wildlife and fisheries agent has been arrested. It's the last day of school for students in Bossier and Caddo parishes. Children are excited about the break, but most parents don't know that Emergency room visits and injuries increase for kids during summer months. We don't yet know the identity of the person who was killed in this crash, but we're in touch with Ross police. And whenever we get that information and more information about this crash in general, how it happened, we will pass that along to you. Reporting live in Ross Township, Carly Flynn Morgan, Channel 11 News. Channel 11's Carly Flynn Morgan is live with tonight's big story. Carly. Melanie, there are two dead after what happened this afternoon. A canine named Aaron and the suspect accused of stabbing him to death. Now authorities are left mourning one of their own killed in the line of duty. Dozens of police officers watched canine Aaron take his final ride. His body left this veterinarian's office where they tried to save him, but his injuries were just too severe. Pittsburgh Police Canine's Facebook page posted this picture of Aaron. He was five years old and had worked for Port Authority Police for the past four years. County Police tell us this all started when a father and son were drinking under a gazebo on Port Authority property here in this Wilkinsburg neighborhood. When police approached, they say the pair assaulted the officers, then got away. Minutes later, they caught up with the son, Bruce Kelly, and told him to stop. A witness describes what happened next. He just kept on walking. He wasn't listening to the police whatsoever. He just kept on going. That's when police fired their tasers at Kelly, but his thick coat prevented him from getting shocked. At that time, they released the dog on the, on the man, and he, took, he had a knife, and he stabbed the dog. The dog went down, and the officer shot and um, killed the man. Several witnesses we talked to heard police fire the tasers and guns. And all I heard was bang, 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 and I just started screaming. It's just crazy and it's sad that something like this has to happen. Aaron was rushed to the vet but ultimately died. A terrible loss for Port Authority Police. He's a member of that officer's family and he's a he's a member of the law enforcement family and it's uh, it's it's a difficult time. One Port Authority officer was injured in that initial scuffle with the men, although not seriously. Police did find Kelly's father. They tell us he was detained. No word yet on funeral arrangements for K-9 Aaron. Allegheny County Police are handling this case, and we will continue to keep you updated as they release more details. Reporting live in Pittsburgh, Carly Flynn Morgan, Channel 11 News on Fox 53. I spoke with the family of Larry Bennett. They say they are just heartbroken, mourning the loss of this young father. They knew something was wrong early Monday morning when they couldn't get in touch with Larry, but they had no idea it would take several days to get answers. We're all going to miss him. We're going to miss him so much. Family and friends said goodbye to 24 year old Larry Bennett on Sunday, expecting to see him later that night. A friend from Erie had been staying with the family. He volunteered to drive her home. Early Monday morning around 5, around 5 o'clock in the morning, his mom said, I know my child, something's wrong. 
When the father of three never came home and didn't answer his phone, the family made a report with Pittsburgh police. They frantically called hospitals from here to Erie. Everybody said no, never, you know, haven't heard of him. He does not in our system. They would spend the next several days in agony, wondering what happened. As soon as I found out they came, he was missing. Like I got this real short pain in my stomach. Like, and I just knew something bad happened. Police contacted them Thursday evening. Bennett's car had been discovered off the road on I-79 South near mile marker 166. His body inside. It's a sense of relief that we finally know where he's at and we could put him at rest. But this is not the answer we wanted. We wanted him to come home. We wanted him to be alive. Now, the coroner listed the cause of death as blunt force trauma. His family just devastated, now left making funeral arrangements. And coming up at 6 o'clock, I'll tell you why it took several days for anyone to find Bennett and his car and who finally did. Reporting live in Lawrenceville, Carly Flynn Morgan, Channel 11 News. I'm Carly Flynn Morgan. Here's a look at what's coming up this half hour. Firefighters are still investigating the cause of a fire at a Bozier club. We'll tell you if anyone was hurt. Fire officials now say the cause is undetermined as they continue to investigate a Bozier City club that went up in flames. The fire broke out just after five yesterday afternoon at Action Central Lounge on East Texas Street. When firefighters arrived, they found heavy smoke coming from the roof. They quickly got it under control. Construction workers were there at the time, but no injuries were reported. In the courts, a jury in Minden has convicted a Bienville Parish man for the aggravated rape of a child under the age of 13. The jury deliberated for about two hours before convicting 44-year-old Andre DeMary of Arcadia. The aggravated rape conviction carries an automatic life sentence without parole. Kirsten, important information. Thanks so much. Your time now is 610 on a Friday. Up next, we have Tech Bites. Then it's a fairy tale weekend in the Arquitex. Disney on Ice is in town, and Rick Rowe is at the CenturyLink Center live with a preview of the show. Uh, you know, I, I feel like a big kid out here this morning. <laughs> <Love> <laughs> he it. is a big kid. <laughs> he is a big kid. Hey, thank you for reminding <laughs> us where we are and where you are. Carly is over here naming all the characters. Lumiere, the yeah. candle. And I think Brian would look good with one of those forks. On his head. On his head. Yeah, It'd I be also a, do. Be a good look for him. Yeah, we appreciate that. Okay, so Google is hoping to put an end to the question, where did I park my car? Which I really want to see this story because I'm one of those people who walks out of the grocery store and, and is just aimlessly walking around the parking lot. I have no clue where I parked my car ever. Well, wait no more because ABC's Diana Perez has this morning's Tech Bites. From children being treated for cancer to transplant and trauma patients, someone needs blood every two seconds. Today, Brian Fowler takes you through the process of saving a life with a pint. Blood is always needed, but right now there's a low supply of B negative blood. Tomorrow, there's a blood drive at Splash Kingdom. Just go to our website, ktbs.com, where you'll see a link to LifeShare and America's blood centers. Our bodies contain 10 pints of blood, but we can only give one pint at a time. The four main blood types are A, B, A, B, and O. And the rarest blood type, whichever one isn't on the shelf when a patient needs it. A good reminder for people if they can to give blood. Absolutely.